Oh, our first talk of the afternoon is Sonia Peter from uh, Barbados. I think this is the first time we have someone from Barbados. So uh, we are very, very excited to have you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to get back to my first page. I've been tutored how to use this properly um, and hoping that I do. Um, I will, of course, acknowledge Botanical Congress for having me here. Um, it's been really exciting to hear all of the talks so far today um, and to see the synergy uh, within all the work we do. Um, I apologize beforehand. I am not even going to pretend that I have a handle on the Spanish language. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do what I know. <laughs> um, so um, today I'm really just going to take you through a walk of the Andromeda Botanic Garden and our newly installed Ethnobotanical Garden and the significance of that achievement. Um, so we were instructed, of course, to where we could um, do some translation, and I have tried. I apologize very much if that was not terribly successful. Um, but I am going to have a look at Andromeda Botanic Gardens and its importance in terms of conservation of biodiversity. I'm going to um, look at our ethnobotanical garden and why we think it's of great value. And I happen to be a chemist um, who came out of um, the rigor of chemical education. I taught for many years and um, also researched natural products, uh, which is my qualification. But I had this um, need to come into the community and uh, speak to the public because I have um, great problems with the work we do in academia, uh, being held behind those walls, libraries and, and vaults, etc., and not getting into the public where it would be of value. So um, this slide, I know there are many Caribbean participants, and I may not have had to put this up, but I'm putting it up because very often when I attend conferences and speak about Barbados, I get asked if I am from Jamaica. Um, so <laughs> this is often one of my first slides. Uh, we see Barbados lying most easterly, um, uh, acknowledgement to Colombia. Um, and the problem with Barbados lying most easterly um, is when those ships came across the Atlantic, um, they saw Barbados and in their historical documentation spoke glowingly about the biodiversity that they saw when they approached, and then they went about in earnest to destroy it. So um, a little bit about Barbados. Um, we are small, 166 square miles, and Andromeda Botanic Gardens is located in um, St. Joseph, and uh, that is one of the 11 parishes, and um, it's positioned um, enviably, I would say, because the garden looks over um, our eastern coastline, um, which is rugged and extremely beautiful. The garden um, was established in 1954, and I'll probably repeat that again on another slide. It spans eight acres with over 300, 600 plant species, um, 120 of which are tree species. And it's um, a lovely sort of maze of 20 connected gardens. So a brief window into the ABG. Established by Iris Banerjee in 1954, 
She was an avid horticulturalist and has been recognized for her work. And she approached Andromeda um, to have it be um, a beacon for global plant biodiversity. And so she has included um, species from all around the world, Madagascar, um, Caribbean region, India, and it is truly representative of global biodiversity to the point where there are about 19 of the species that are on the IUCN list. And there is one particular species that is um, extinct in the wild, according to all of the analysis that has been done. And a sample of that is held in Andromeda. The property is now managed by a company called the Passiflor Limited, headed by um, Sharon Cook, who is quite a flamboyant personality, as you can see her nestled <laughs> um, among the plants. And uh, she's extremely passionate about carrying forward um, Iris Vanity's passion. And um, I'm just read a bit here, her mission statement. Um, to provide quality education and training, garden design, horticulture, aspects of ethnobotany. She wants to hold up the historic value of the site, the contribution to conservation of plant biodiversity. The garden has been entrusted to our Barbados National Trust, and uh, Iris Banaki was a founder of that institution. So a quick window into the garden. It's lush and beautiful. Um, anytime you're there, please make sure to um, have a tour of the garden. And uh, like I said, it's a, a sort of a beautiful maze for exploration of 20 connected gardens. And um, here is the Heliconia um, garden. And um, Iris was so, so recognized that there is a Heliconia um, cultivar that's named in honor of her, Heliconia stricta hyla. In some of the areas, an open plan was intended um, so that we've got the species that um, you know, need that sunlight, um, and many of them are strong. Um, we've got a palm region as well, and uh, out of the 19 plants on the UCN list. Um, we probably have about 10 um, varying degrees of vulnerable um, and threatened. The Ethnobotanical Garden was established in December 2022 um, as a community resource and uh, really dedicated to um, the ancestors who came over on those ships. Um, being initially immersed in the beautiful biodiversity on the island, but then, of course, uh, being divorced from that, being made to work under very harsh um, conditions. And um, I could imagine observing us losing about 95% of our virgin cover uh, to accommodate from the cane plantation and the craze of 4T that was happening in the UK and Europe. In our ethnobotanical garden, we have begun to install um, 60 shrubs, herbs, and small trees that have been documented as important um, to the enslaved during the period of the 1600s to the 1800s. Um, there's a number of families, but the noted ones for us are Asteraceae, Lamiaceae, the mate family, and you for music. So a little more about this plant biodiversity in the EBG. As I said, there are 60 species and that is spanning 37 families. Interestingly, we found that the u 4 bhc is the family that was um, turned to in terms of medicinal value. And I will address that a little more. I'm looking out for the sign telling me how much time I have left. Um, here we have um, some examples of the families in the ethnobotanical garden. And um, U4BAC will always pop up. Here we have um, a plant, a shrub called Cotton Flavin, 
that was used um, for healing of wounds. And that has been transferred through centuries. And uh, in modern times, it's still being used. I got this really interesting story because we bring people into the garden of um, a young woman telling me that when she was in her um, earlier years, uh, she went along that eastern coast that I spoke about, and uh, she fell and got injured, ran home to her mother, and her mother sent her right back into the area because this is a coastal species for her to go get that plant, break the stem, rub it over your wound, and don't do it again. <laughs> um, uh, we also have this lovely, this is called turkeyberry, the lanum program. And apparently it was part of our culinary diet um, ages ago. And we are trying to restore that in, again, all within the community. And we are also trying to bring in um, butterflies and uh, this note species of the apple cement family is one that is potential. Here we have some others, um, the Spicea secunda. Uh, this plant, when we boil in water, it's a um, red colored extract, and it was used for anemia because of that purpose. In accordance with the doctrine of signatures, um, as a chemist, I cannot account for all of the tradition that has been passed down. But this is how our people interface with the natural environment. Um, the doctrine of signatures says that if you see a plant and it has a physical property um, that looks like it's related to um, an area that could be helpful in taking care of the body, then that's what you use it for. On the right, it's a orellana, also um, called the lipstick tree or anato. And uh, this one, we believe, was introduced by the indigenous peoples of the region, um, being very important in their rituals. And now it is incorporated in our culinary tradition, but it's also um, commercially viable. It's in the cosmetic industry. And if you are, oh my gosh, <laughs> that can't be true. <laughs> um, if you are, into using those brightly orange colored snaps that you should not, um, then it's probably Bixa or Lana that's providing that lovely orange. Thing. Cassia alata is an antifungal species. The Salpinia pulcherima is uh, the, um, our national plant. And we understand uh, that during the period of slavery, this was used as a form of family planning. Um, the horrors of bringing a child into that period. Um, it was said to be useful for um, regulating the menstrual cycle, but the women in the community applied it as family. We recently had a working relationship with Global Resolve of Arizona State University, and they quite um, that worked with us in us establishing or potting house that is strictly for the ethnobotanical garden. Um, plants used during slavery, wound healing, burn, infections, digestive problems, human health, as I mentioned, colds, flu, and fever. And I have to speed up if I'm going to make this. Um, uh, as a chemist, um, it's important to note that not only can we preserve um, biocultural traditions, uh, biodiversity. Uh, plants are really uh, chemical laboratory. Um, and the more I work on this, the more fascinating I am. Um, during the period of slavery, many of the plants were used um, for wound healing, but really to stem the anti-inflammatory response. When it gets out of the uh, normal range of activity is when we get limitations on healing. So I wanted to find out what were some of the compounds in some of these plants in one minute. <laughs> and I targeted a group of compounds called flavonoids and then subsequently investigated um, how these could hinder the inflammatory response um, linked to SARS-CoV-2 actually. And uh, we were able to show that 
the flavonoids could dock with the proteins that um, are involved in the replication of the virus. And in all of these images that I'm showing here, um, this is one of the molecules that were, uh, was isolated from one of the plants used to fold them through. And in all instances, um, they worked comparably to what was the control remdesivir. And that we're hoping to continue to explore that. Um, our garden is used as a living library for botany culture and phytochemistry. And we have a vibrant <laughs> outreach program. And these are images from our regular ethnobotany workshops where we take persons through the garden, talk about the history, and uh, break it right down to the point of having them prepare a healing agent from plants in the garden. My acknowledgements, right on time. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia, so much for presenting us your garden, Andromeda.